The shape that I've defined here is a land use area, and this type of element lets me set up land cover details. And we've implemented the rational C. This one's user defined, but I've also got a catalog of land cover areas that I can browse to and import from. Now I'll create one more land use area and that first one was grass. I'll create one for pavement and I'm just going to snap it to uh, the grass land cover area. Now that I've got my land cover areas and you can see this one's got a rational C of 0.95, I can place a catchment. And I'll set the feature definition for my catchment to land uses and I'll place that in the design. So once I've placed a catchment area and this is set up to be defined by land cover areas, I can then compute the hydrology of the catchment area. Once that's done, you see that we've got a sub area collection and it has read the land use areas. It's worked out the percentage of each land use area that's covered by the catchment and it's applied the relevant runoff coefficient. And we see in the properties that that's created a weighted or a composite runoff coefficient. So if I then change the catchment area and compute the hydrology again, we see that the runoff coefficient has changed. If I move the land use area, so I'm adjust, adjusting the grass area because the pavement land use area is snapped to it, that automatically adjusts again. And if we select the catchment area again and then we compute again, we'll see the runoff coefficient change again. As well as picking points to create land use areas, I can also use shapes. So I could, for example, digitize a shape and then use that for a land use area by changing the method to pick shape and then picking that area. A model builder also supports the import of land area polygons.